In some hospitals and health clinics in Indonesia, newborn babies are being kept from their mothers when the parents can't pay the medical bills. Health workers call it a form of hostage that can break families apart, sometimes forcing them to sell their babies or place them up for adoption. U.S.-born midwife Robin Lim is offering a much-needed alternative at free health clinics in Bali and Aceh. FSRN's Rebecca Henschke went to visit the clinic and files this report. <laughs> Twin three-year-old boys dressed in tiger-striped outfits run around the car park of Bumi Sehat Birthing Clinic. Their mother, Yentriana Lopez, shadows their every movement. She knows what it means to lose one of them. When I was pregnant, I didn't have an ultrasound, so it was not until I gave birth that I found out I had twins. The midwife cried out, there's another one. So in the end, two babies meant double the price. We didn't have that money. We asked them if we could pay installments, but they said we can't do that. It has to be now, tonight. We were having money troubles at that time. We didn't have the money, so we had to make a contract, and the midwife kept one of the babies. The bill was originally 500 US dollars, but each day they didn't pay, it increased. In the end, the bill was 800 dollars. Lopez is from East Indonesia, and her husband, Muliono, is Javanese. They're immigrants to Bali and amongst the poorest of the poor. And for four long months, they were not even allowed to see their son, let alone breastfeed him. I was distraught to be separated from my child. I didn't care if I ate or not. We were trying everything to get our child back. We just didn't have the money. As a mother, my thoughts were always with my child. When 54-year-old American midwife Robin Lim found out what happened, she jumped into action. I said, okay. Let's go and find out from the midwife what she wants. Let's just pay it. Let's not ask questions. Let's get this baby home. The midwife wasn't there. Her nurse was there. And she said, oh, those stupid poor people. Those were her words, those stupid poor people. They're so stupid. They didn't have money to pay. And I said, well, we're here to pay the bill now. She said, oh, well, you're too late. That baby was sold a long time ago to Jogja. And the father's just in shock. And Muliona says, that's impossible because just a few days ago I came here and gave her money and she accepted my money. And she says, well, you still owe money, but you're, not, you're unable to pay. We sold the baby to people who can take care of him. And this is not an uncommon practice in Indonesia. But it is against the law. Lim called the police and some local journalists. The fact that they were identical twins made the process easier and three weeks later, Yentriana Lopez was reunited with her son. Lim wants to see more improvements to maternal health, not only in Indonesia but across the globe. Her team runs this health clinic in Ubud. Since 2003, anyone who needs it receives free prenatal care, birthing services and medical aid. After the massive tsunami in 2004, a smaller sister location was built in Aceh to care for displaced survivors. Combined, the two clinics have facilitated the birth of more than 5,000 babies. In one of the birthing rooms, a new family is getting ready to go home. So this is your new baby? Yeah. Oh. My son. <laughs> yeah. How old? Uh, two, day, two days. You look fantastic. Thank you. (laughs) Mm, I'm feeling great. Just imagine being a mom. (laughs) Robin Lim comes in to say goodbye. Well, you have a beautiful son. And you have a wonderful husband, too. He was great the whole time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and you're feeling good about breastfeeding? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I really know how... my, My sister says... Two years with um, her daughter. In many hospitals in Indonesia, this conversation would not be taking place. Jakarta has yet to adopt the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes, which regulates the milk formula industry by ensuring that its products aren't freely marketed to new and easily influenced mothers.
Robin Lim says formula milk companies have a heavy influence in Indonesia. There, there is there is a coercion that happens uh, where the medical professionals, particularly um, pediatricians, midwives. I know a pediatrician personally who gets a new car every year. They go in and talk to them, and they say, "Look, you want a new car this year? Make sure every baby born in this hospital gets a bottle before they get a breast." Okay, right away the sucking of that that bottle, that nipple on the bottle, it sabotages breastfeeding because it's a different kind of sucking. And then you have a situation where people cannot afford to feed their babies. Recent data has shown that exclusive breastfeeding rates in Indonesia have dropped by 10 percent between 2006 and 2008. In response, the Indonesian government brought in a new law this year, making it illegal to stand in the way of exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life. Those caught face up to an $11,000 fine or one year in prison. Lim's team has been training midwives across the country to promote breastfeeding and natural births. In one of the birthing rooms, Alit Ari Asuti is in the final stages of giving birth to her first child. She's a devout Hindu like most Balinese. So the five midwives are chanting a Hindu song while supporting her in a bath filled with flowers. The baby's head appears. Breathe deeply, one of the midwives says, and the chant begins again. While Lim continues to deliver babies and provide mothers with a safe and free maternal clinic, she's also fighting to put an end to the practice of holding babies hostage if mothers can't pay the medical bills. Rebecca Henschke, Free Speech Radio News, Bali.